Now, yesterday we had, I, I, I went from structural and constitutional more to what came from the spirit down into the visual, you remember? So things that became visible. So this, this, uh, the sculptural architecture, arrow element, stream, stream. And then that what belongs to the will, that's coming from below up and what's living in the blood, which is more connected to music and to speech. And the different, well, I mentioned the different layers of will and so forth. Yeah, you're still with me? I want to continue that a little bit and I want to take you through um, the third lecture of what's it called, balance in teaching or meditative acquired balance that's balance in teaching meditatively acquired knowledge of man you know the German title is that long um, but balance in teaching it's called third lecture first and then I hope to go to the mirroring so yeah, mirroring process well some of it Now, everything that is visible in the world is created. And yet you can find in all mythology and in, in the Bible and so forth, everything we know in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, it is created. But what created everything in the world? In the, in, the, in the Gospel of St. John, where it starts, it said, in the beginning was the Word, the Logos. And in the Old Testament, from the Jewish tradition, we have that from the Jewish tradition, we know the seven days, God spoke. Was there anyone to listen to it? Maybe not. It was unheard. Unaudible? Is that, is that a word? In, inaudible. Inaudible sound. So, everything is created but when it was in a spiritual state, it was sound. The signs of the zodiac is sound. Forces, the formative forces from the zodiac are sounds. When you study eurythmy, when you do eurythmy, you do the zodiacal signs. You can do the signs and the movement that, that are, that, that movements that are connected with that. But there are also sounds that belong to that. That Scorpio, that goes into the matter. Or the you know that the liquid comes up. What's that? What's it? Capricorn. Capricorn. And so every sign of the zodiac has a consonant to to the fo so it is sound. And these sounds form. And you can do nature experiments. That's sixth grade, isn't that? That you really see, for instance, when you have this. I don't know the name, but anyway, what? What? Yeah, okay, yeah, that's it, yeah, the gladney plate, right? That you have sounds and you see that these sounds make form. So really think that that's how it went. God spoke and there it was. And he, afterwards he saw that it was okay, that it was good, not before, <laughs> afterwards. So, huh? It wasn't. Good, good, like. <laughs> Let's try another thing. <laughs> Coke. <laughs> There <laughs> so, so everything that is visible, and even this thing, was, was sound. It's difficult to think of that, but well, let's take that serious. So everything that is, belongs to this stream of, 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 of uh, structural, no, not structural, sculptural and plastic, uh, plas plastic is the German word, architectural for, um, so, uh, forces was sound before and then it came into existence and sound formed space in India they, they say nada brahma nada brahma uh, uh, everything is sound so, nada brahma in, yeah, everything is and even brahma is a name you know the, everything is sound nada brahma so inaudible Sound, or let's, well, let's, why, why don't we do the, the word? But it was, yeah, like you do, yeah, like that. I was to think, I have to think of my spelling, <laughs> the word. And then it becomes visible, yeah? And <clears throat> so that's that. And now, that's one stream. 
from above towards below. Actually, it's the incarnation stream from the head down into the feet. And then we have this other string that be belongs to music and speech, which is connected with, this, with the will, how we express ourselves to the outside world. So that what is become, uh, let's say, audible, yeah, yeah, audible, what we can hear, so that there are waves through the air that come to your eardrum, so this, so you can hear. But before it becomes audible, it was something else. And in this lecture, this third lecture, Steiner speaks of the human speech, and there he says, inwardly, in the soul of the human being. Now, those of you who are on this conference or are in the, in the remedial course already know that the human soul is what? Is a body of color. But it is invisible. We think it belongs to, we want to, when we paint it, we make it this, but it is invisible. So it's invisible color, invisible astral qualities, emotions, feelings, thoughts, will impulses, whatever it is, but it's invisible. But it is color. When you want something, it is red. When you have a desire for something, it's even vermilion or even with yellow mixed. But we don't see it. At least when you're not clairvoyant. Let's say that. I'm not. So there it is, invisible, and it streams up in this, from, from the bottom up. And it goes up, and it goes up, and it goes up. And there is a certain point that it's damped. There is a dam. So these colors come up, and they dam. They are dammed up. And this dam is the larynx. So this color then is dammed up, and then it makes this jump, it goes through the eye of the needle, and it comes into the physical world as vibration. From my larynx to your larynx, to your eardrum, or how it works. So the physical audible sound in the human soul is color. That's a difficult one, but anyway. So everything that's visible, like I'm here, was sound and then it appears in the physical world as something that is visible. But sound was invisible color and then it becomes audible. When you think of music, we have the minor scales and the major scales. Well, there are more, but let's stick to those. And then you can have the idea when it's a major scale, you are more on the red side of the spectrum of colors. While it's a major scale for our feeling, then it's more to the blue side. And even, even I think, uh, 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 what's her name? Forgot her name. Chris. What's your name? Chris. Sorry? Chris. Yeah, Chris. I'm sorry. I, I knew. Chris Pochelle. Yeah. Um, Chris mentioned, and, and we know that, that you can color your voice. So every, in, in music terms, you, you always use, or often use colors to express, to, to change it, or to, you see? So we, it's common knowledge, everybody knows, but you have to relate it to this. So here we have invisible color, uh, yeah, invisible color. Feeling, all kinds of feelings, and we express it in sound. Now, <laughs> this is physical sound. I speak. Here are all my colors. <laughs> and I think, what I'm going to say now? So these are all kind of colors. Or maybe, oh, it, I take this. That's another color. And there, it's damned up. You don't see it, I hope. And, there, and I have my doubts. And I think, oh, yes, this is interesting. And there are all, all kinds of colors, right? And then here it's damped up. And there it comes. The <laughs> and through the physical realm, through this physical space, in vibration, towards your eardrum, into and so forth, cochlea, into your brain, and then it is, it, in some way, it lands into your souls.